Hello, I'm Toy Cat and welcome back to the third channel Walk and Talk. Today I'm in Spring Mountain State Park. It's just going through some of the wilderness of Nevada for a little bit of a walk and some nature to reset the mind. But I don't want to talk about resetting the mind today. I want to talk about uh, just going straight to the chase. Uh, I am looking to hire some people. I'm going to be doing this in a much more official way soon, maybe, uh, potentially. Uh, but I wanted to I wanted to do something a bit different and say, hey, are you watching this third channel video? Are you looking uh, to maybe work on something related to the channel? I might need you. And uh, <laughs> the, uh, the long story short fit, I'll try and get out of the way now. I'm looking for someone who uh, Eva is good with building in Minecraft and is looking to make some interesting, I guess we call them sets for certain types of videos as well as uh, indeed I've got the uh, map building team. But uh, also I'm looking for someone who is uh, good at making uh, highlights of uh, streams and would maybe be interested in doing that for my streams. I, uh, <laughs> I'll detail more about it later. But for now, let me explain the weird transition I've gone through over the last year of hiring people for what is effectively a one-person Minecraft YouTube channel. For most of the channel's history, and indeed, even now, I think there's a certain charm to this idea of like one-person uh, channels. Like, YouTube is about the creator. Um, it's that, you know, it's not like TV where, well, you know, you might like a TV show, but the main actor is different to the person who, who writes the scripts for that actor, who is different to the person who directs those actors, who is different to the person who funds and creates the premise, you know? Like, there's so many different people involved in a TV show, whereas almost everything on YouTube is the love child of one person. And I've always liked my channel being that way to a certain extent. And so I always had a hard time even hiring an editor because it's like, well, you know, having an editor makes this a two-person job, means the overheads are higher. Like, I could do my main YouTube channel for as long as it, you know, put, puts out enough money to feed me and house me and stuff, right? So when you have uh, extra staff involved, um, you know, when you have editors involved, it's like, well, now you also have to be able to pay the editing uh, amount every month. Uh, you know, like you, there is a lot, you know, for instance, if a video gets 10,000 views or, uh, you know, $20 or whatever the amount is, that's $20 a profit if it's just me spending my time. But when it's someone else spending their time and when I put, you know, five times that much uh, or four times that much or whatever it is into the editing of the video, I just made a lot on that piece of content. And that is uh, a really hard thing to like grapple with. Every single time you add overhead, every single time you add new staff costs or new production costs, that means that the amount of success you need as a minimum becomes higher. You know, like what should be a really successful video, 25,000 views is great if you're a brand new channel, actually sucks <laughs> if you're spending a lot more than 25,000 views worth of uh, money on uh, you know, making the content that got those views. Um, this is a, a trouble a lot of legacy media kind of has with their attitude towards YouTube. It's very hot, by the way. Do I ever mention that Nevada's hot? Probably not. It's actually the first, like, medium hot day as opposed to hot, hot day uh, in a while. That's why I can actually come out here for the first time in a bit. I feel like the sun being behind me is terrible for lighting. I'm sorry. Should have done this on the way back while I'm squinting looking at the sun. But you know what? You can squint and look at the sun instead. Anyway, um, so uh, yeah, like uh, it's always been hard. But over the last couple of years, I've uh, not only got a second channel editor, um, but also a couple of main channel editors. But also, I've got a guy uh, working on the map stuff. Uh, and so at this point, we're on like four or five separate people who work on uh, making stuff. Uh, I've been playing around with a third channel editor in some videos as well even. Like, uh, it's crazy just the amount of uh, people. Sorry, one sec. <sighs> it's crazy just the sheer number of people who are uh, involved in the projects in some way. And that's why I always find it ridiculous when I'm like, I think I need someone else. Um, because even though uh, there are all sorts of ways in which, like, you know, maybe I could uh, have a, you know, second, second channel editor and maybe that would be required. And a third main channel. You know, these are like gradual changes. But I think I need entirely new uh, employee categories, and let me tell you why. Um, like, when it comes to watching uh, YouTube, I really like long-form content. I've mentioned this a ton of times. <sighs> I really like that. Hi. I really like 
uh, long form content that is, uh, you know, I, I, but uh, in reality, I only listen to like a couple of podcasts every week. I do listen to other podcasts though, via their highlights channels. Even the podcasts I do watch, I watch a lot of highlights from older ones in a way that I couldn't go back and just watch, you know, six, four hour long episodes or 64 hour long episodes. Instead getting the highlights off them, it's a really great way, great way so watch podcasts that I otherwise couldn't. Watch super long form content I otherwise couldn't. I get I get stream recommendations too. I'm I uh, I'm not usually big on watching streams because uh, I like the kind of again like discussion type stream I have more than the generic gaming stream where it's like all crazy reactions all stream long. But uh, I get recommended highlights of people's streams too, and it basically uh, made me realize like yeah, this is how I consume the content. Why would I expect anyone else to have to watch all of my live streams to understand what's going on? Wouldn't it be cooler if there was a shorter form way of doing that? And I realized, like, I can do this myself. But, like, I don't know what my most iconic moments are. You know, every time I see the uh, Harrison Gray uh, yearly recap, that's when I realize, like, oh, these are the moments that, you know, they're interesting to me, but I don't even remember them. Um, hi. It was very empty when I started recording, I swear. But, um, you know, like, there are moments in there that are just... I don't want to be a psychopath recording my, uh, my thing. Oh, I think having the camera out, and even like this, uh, makes people have that weird look of, like, I'm not going to say anything. Anyway, speaking of not saying anything, I, um, I, I, I think that it's weird not necessarily knowing what the most interesting moments of a piece of content you produced are, but I think it also makes sense that if I'm doing something for two to three hours in a row, or a dozen hours, I have no clue what the most interesting bits are, because I'm so focused on what I'm doing now that I don't remember what I did half an hour ago, or an hour and a half ago, or whatever else. And so, I think I need someone who does watch the streams, who does know the interesting bits, but also knows the YouTube algorithm well enough to know, like, Toycat shares his thoughts, uh, Toy Cat summarizes the German Empire in two minutes. Might be an interesting title. Toy Cat, um, <laughs> you know, like an opportune Toy Cat moment. So I, I generally have no clue. Like, what is the? Uh, I have a feel. I have a guess for what the meta might be. Uh, but yeah, if you if you watch highlight channels and or you watch a lot of Toy Cat streams, and you think you know what would be interesting in terms of conversational topics, um, then please do apply for a brand new position. Um, well, I'll talk about how you can do that, etc. later. But if you're interested, stay watching, please. But the other thing I'm looking for is, uh, there's a lot of videos that are made better by like visuals and building. And, um, you know, uh, we, I've tried this before, kind of like semi-professionally, just sending off my videos to a guy. Uh, Adorable has been great, by the way. Um, but just sending off my videos and saying, hey, here's a thing. Uh, that I, you know, I think could be done better with a video, uh, with like a background for it. And he's been great at sending them back, and it's been, uh, super great as like an informal thing. But I think I do make enough videos that require... Oh man, there's ants here, it's horrifying. Oh, is that a butterfly? I think so. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm making enough videos now that could be improved in that way. That I think it's worth having, like, a proper person on the team who can do that. If you're good at building and also making like straightforward things for someone to look at, you know, it's that thing of like less is more, uh, but also doing a good job at interesting enough buildings, but also you get the Toy Cat style. I would love if you sent me uh, an application kind of explaining exactly what it is. Uh, you know, like maybe build it, build, take, a, take one of my videos, build a version of it, like, that looks way better that then I could just hop in and, like, I could talk about the actual facts and the information, because, you know, building isn't my strong suit. The the physical show tell isn't the strong suit. I prefer the... I think I do a better job of the explanation when the physical stuff is taken care of. So, um, yeah, if you think you're good at that, then I think you should send me an application. But how do you, how do, you do these? So I'm going to make proper formal uh, forms for this at some point. Uh, but if you want to 
If you're watching this far channel, I think I want your applications slightly more than the general ones I'm gonna public live on my on my Twitter or on my YouTube and you know maybe people recommend to their friends. If you watch this channel, I am interested in you. And so uh yeah, if you uh obviously before I even say anything else, you need to confirm in the email that you're of age of, you know, legally working in your country, uh that you know you know about the vague idea of contracting laws and you can send out invoices rather than expecting me to pay you under the table. Sadly, I am a <sighs> real, real business at this point, can't just be saying, hey, I'll just PayPal you, uh, you know, <laughs> I'll just PayPal you $40 here and that. Like, no, we gotta, gotta have a proper invoice system, uh, either send physical invoices or through PayPal. But um, like, you need to know about the premise that you're keeping records of your earnings for yourself. Um, as long as you're doing that, and as long as you're legally able to work uh, in whatever jurisdiction <laughs> that you live in, um, then send me an application. If you want to do a building thing, I'd love to see videos or images of a world from a video that I made in the past that you think you could do better. If you want to be a stream highlights person, honestly, just clip one of my live streams into an unlisted one minute video, give it a catchy title, and if you want some bonus points, send me a catchy thumbnail. Um, as well. Uh, I, I, I think that'd be useful. Send me a thumbnail that you think would attract people to watch your highlight as well as the title for that because uh, yeah basically short for I think making these short form contents I think a minute or less is good I think you know five minutes of like long explanations but in general less than 15 minute uh, you know ideally have some shorts and some other things maybe if it's a if it's really intense and great for 60 seconds a short if it's like a longer explanation as i imagine it will be a long video give me an example of what you can do and uh yeah i, I would love to see it you're probably the one person watching this video it's got what like a thousand views with your particular skill set or that's willing to pick up that skill set in some way i would love uh because you know actually let's talk about it because I mentioned this before, it's one of the ways I think I'm different to most employees. I would love to see you improve your skills. I give everyone who is working for me and still works for me uh, above inflation raises, not just once a year, but you, you know, usually twice a year. Things are, if their skills are improving, I think it's important to make sure uh, that pay is reflecting that improvement of performance. And so, uh, yeah, I, if you're, and I'd also the other thing I like to do. Again, I, I think this should, I don't know why this isn't the norm. It's like, if you wanna do one of those, uh, one of those jobs uh, and you, you know, you're thinking like, okay, but like how many, if there, if you want more work, there is always usually space for it. If you're good at what you do, I am excited to have you do more and have you improve your skills and do better. And uh, yeah, if that sounds like fun to you, um, let me know. I'm getting to the point now, there's so many people I have to be in contact with for this that I uh, I think I'm gonna need someone to be the go-between between me and all the people I'm working with. But yeah, we'll, uh, please send me your application. <laughs> I didn't say where to email it to. Uh, email it to uh, ibx2cat at gmail.com. That's where I ask people to generally email me, whereas business stuff goes to the main email, ibx2cat. But then I ignore it because I can't deal with the business stuff most of the time. So send me your application to ibx2cat at gmail.com. Uh, show me some example of what you can do and uh, Yeah, tell me make sure you confirm you're of age of working. I'd love to hear that. It is a hot day You know, it's only a medium hot day, but it's still too hot for my liking But if you want to see some mountains, it's what they'd be looking like <sighs> Yeah, no, it's a weird thing if you want to hear my real thoughts and employing people it's a weird thing to be like outsourcing various skills but the thing i've learned from the last couple of years of actually doing it is like yeah spending six hours editing your video and doing a worse job than someone who can spend four hours doing it or whatever it is um or you know even if it's like it takes me two hours and it takes someone else an hour but they do a better job not only have you freed up two hours of your time to do other things that only you can do but also now you've done a better job more people enjoy it it seems like recently people have been enjoying the new <sighs> how did an ant get on me it fly 
oh god that's horrifying um i know flying ants are a thing but i don't like that they're a thing i'm now going to be looking all over myself for more ants um yeah i um i think that um one of the things that um is weird about it is like saying like because it's almost saying like i'm important enough that i get other people to do things for me at least in the uk that's how it's kind of seen like you know like if you get a you know if you have a cleaner you're like a rich 2d foodie who thinks he's above cleaning or if you get a you know hiring people to do things is seen that way maybe outside of a lawyer if you're going to court i think a lawyer is like the generally accepted one or an accountant if you run your own business i was saying no i do my own accountancy um <laughs> maybe at some point i gotta switch that out huh but uh you know like those are the two like acceptable professions where i guess you also have like a state agent when you sell a house you wouldn't do that yourself but otherwise it's seen as like ooh, you think you're above doing this to you getting someone to paying someone to move your house for you ooh, look at mr money bags over here and i guess to some extent that is what i'm saying with the like oh yeah i bet i reckon i could have more success uh by hiring someone to do this thing than I can, can without. I also just think like it's, it brings a whole new element of like what running this YouTube channel or this internet business or whatever you want to call it is. Because it means that instead of just being about what I can do, there is now always an element of people management skills and they're like, yeah, people are gonna be upset with X, Y, Z. Um, you know, like scheduling around, like something important comes up at the last minute and now you've got oh there's a lizard that's cute now you've got to deal with that and you can ask for the most reliable person in the world but everyone has these flaws when it's yourself you're just really easy to take responsibility for the flaw but when it's not it's a bit harder so yeah it's like a whole new element of like not only coming up with an idea coming up with who'd be good to execute the idea <sighs> and uh yeah it's hard you know, having to, uh, but it's also like necessary. Like I couldn't run, uh, you know, what is it now? Like five YouTube channels by myself at any real frequency. Um, plus now making shorts for a couple of those channels, plus live streaming on the main channel and live streaming and regular videos are very different, like separate things there. It's like running eight different businesses. And then there's also the map thing and like keeping it all going does take so much time even before actually doing the things building the maps uh you know like making the premise that makes them interesting all that stuff and uh so yeah i i'm sorry if this seems like a rant like oh i just have too much it's not that i have too much success quite the opposite i'm uh i feel like this is the way i keep the ship afloat i referenced this before youtube is like a continuously uh, sinking, you know, like unlike most places where you made a thousand dollars in sales at your bakery last month, you could expect to make about a thousand this month. If, if you do really well, you might do twelve hundred dollars in sales. Uh, you'd have to do really badly for your sales to go down as a bakery. It's a pretty predictable business. But YouTube, the norm, the default, if you do perfectly okay, you know, well enough, that means your views are decreasing last month versus this month. And that means the number of people who care have slightly decreased partially because that you know there's just so much out there so much content but also the standard is always increasing you know the very biggest channels have dozens of editors a uh, hundred people working for them um and that's basically what is required at that end of youtube and so it's like yeah this is my keep the ship afloat move uh it's hard it's it's like a struggle seeing like view counts go down etc but um you know like overall like even though video by video goes up the month by month goes down as we can produce less stuff it's a it's a struggle it's a real struggle uh, but yeah i think uh, in life we think sometimes we hate challenges because it's so stressful when you're like i don't know how to do this but actually i think what it is is we hate challenges that are too hard you also we also hate challenges that are too easy though you ever try to uh 
you know, like lift weights, but they're way too tiny. You're just not engaged or interested. Same, same reason most people get bored of Minecraft when they go too deep into it. You need a level of challenge that is interesting, interesting to you as an individual. Um, and uh, man, this bottle was like half ice and now it's like entirely melted. That's how hot it is. Uh, you need a challenge that suits you as an individual. And only you know what that level of challenge is. But I think for me, this like oscillates between being a little bit of a, a little bit too much of a challenge to like, okay, I think I got this. I think I know what I'm doing. Uh, and trying to find the balance and adding in all these extra elements hopefully means that I'm doing a better job to the end user, to you, to the person who can enjoy whatever these things are. Um, and yeah, if you enjoy these, let me know. Also, if you have an application, send it ibx 2 catgmailcom Just send me an example of what you could do. I'd be really curious to see what it is. Ooh, there's green. Not often you see this out in the desert, huh? <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. I guess we're going to step down into the forest. It is weird that... I'm guessing it's green here because this is where a river sometimes goes. You know, it's like a... Egypt's a desert, but Cairo is actually pretty nice. Oh, there you hear cute little noises too. Let's hope we don't see snakes or bears or something. Ah, eh, we probably won't. I mean, I say probably. If you're watching this video, I, I didn't encounter a bear. Or I did, and that's going to be happening right now. No bears. Sorry to tell you. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope this wasn't a weird application thing. I'm going to put out proper application forms if I don't find some in this video. But I think it'd be fun just to do it this way. Also, this is this is how ridiculous I look with sunglasses on my glasses. How do people normally wear glasses and sunglasses? Like, it just doesn't, doesn't work at all. I don't like it. This is like the one day a month where I have to wear glasses. If you don't know, I wear glasses one day a month. I don't know why my old optician recommended it. My new one seems to not understand the premise, so I don't know who's right and who's dumb. But one of them is definitely one of those things. <sighs> anyway, thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing your responses, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Oh, it's a fork. I hear noises too. I hope they're cute noises, not snake noises. Snakes terrify me, like... I know they won't actually constrict you, but seeing them constrict a person to death is like the worst thing in the world. It's cute noises though, it's like birds chirping. It's all the good stuff. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna get back and make videos now. Goodbye.